This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey, EMM. We are excited to announce that we are now accepting applications for our second annual Diversity and Inclusion Award. The award is eligible to fourth-year med students identifying as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to EM residencies. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November with winners being announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org slash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application. Or you can click on the link in our show notes. Thank you. Okay, we do have an interesting thing to discuss this morning for Medical Minute. Good morning, everyone. It's going to be a fantastic day. Okay, recently I had an opportunity to review a case. It was a young woman who got hit by a car, dragged and was a significant trauma brought in as a trauma activation. When paramedics arrived on the scene, she had signs of life. I don't know exactly what, it wasn't my patient. I think she was spontaneously breathing and had some movement. In route to the hospital, she lost pulses and CPR was initiated. She arrived in our emergency department with an eye gel airway in place and an IO in place and CPR in progress. The total time since loss of pulses was six minutes. So she arrives, let's say the trauma team is not yet here because it was a pretty rapid transport time. She gets down in the department. What do we do next? Warm blanket, all right. We don't want her to get cold, that's true. It's very true. Although the, the warm blanket might impede our next best step. Anybody have other next steps that they would like to do? So we're pointing at the chest. We want to do things to the chest. Okay, this is a patient who would meet criteria for an immediate ED resuscitative thoracotomy. So to crack the chest, basically. So um, when do we do that? In this case, there was a little bit of a pause and a couple other things were done first. Ultimately, the patient did have a thoracotomy and, and the outcome was not great, but her total time of care in the emergency department was about eight minutes. So um, when do we do thoracotomy? Well, there are two main trauma societies that have recommendations. There's the EAST uh, Society, which is the Eastern Association of Surgery for Trauma. Nice acronym, right? The EAST Society, and that's on the East Coast. And then there's another one that everybody calls WEST, but it's not really WEST. It's actually the Western Trauma Association, so it's WTA. But you can just think East, West, and East has their recommendations, and West has their recommendations. So the WTR recommendations, and listen carefully, if they have blunt trauma, and they've had less than 10 minutes of pre-hospital CPR, then they should get a thoracotomy, and she met that criteria. If they have penetrating trauma to the torso, and they've had less than 15 minutes of CPR, then they should get a thoracotomy. And if they have trauma elsewhere, like let's say bad neck trauma, penetrating neck trauma, or penetrating extremity trauma, gunshot wound to the femoral artery, and they've had less than five minutes of pre-hospital CPR, then they should get a thoracotomy. And the kind of other category is if you have a patient that may still have signs of life, but they have just refractory shock, uh, everything we've done and their blood pressure is still 60, uh, then you could consider resuscitative thoracotomy. The EAST criteria are a little bit different than that. We, for the purposes of today, we won't go over that. But patients who meet those criteria, we should immediately proceed with the thoracotomy. We shouldn't be messing with the level one if we don't have enough staff. We shouldn't be doing an additional line. We should be grabbing the tray and doing the thoracotomy. Now, hopefully we have enough staff that things can be going on uh, simultaneously. Somebody could be doing a finger thoracotomy on one side while somebody else is cracking the chest. Somebody could be doing an initial IV, but we shouldn't do those things at the expense of immediate thoracotomy. So how do these patients do? Um, not great in this case, but in general, how do patients do that get thoracotomy? ED thoracotomy. So the outcomes are poor, although they may be moving towards medium. So there was recently a very large study, and just for the podcast people I'll cite, it was Emergency Resuscitative Thoracotomy, a Nationwide Analysis of Outcomes and Predictors of Futility. So um, this, they looked at a huge database of trauma patients who got a thoracotomy within 60 minutes of arrival in the emergency department. It was a ton of patients. Overall, they screened over a million and a half patients and found over 2,000 that kind of met their inclusion criteria who had gotten a rapid ED thoracotomy. And they found that the overall survival rate was 4%, 5, 10. 
So it was actually 20%, which is higher than you would think. It was much better for penetrating trauma. It was 26% in penetrating trauma, 7% in blunt trauma. So you would not have expected our patient in this, in this scenario to do well. What were predictors that you were going to do poorly? If you were 60 or older, bad outcomes. Blunt trauma had bad outcomes. If your pre-hospital heart rate was less than 60 or your ED heart rate was less than 60, those were poor predictors. And then if you didn't have any signs of life still remaining uh, on arrival to the emergency department. And signs of life include uh, cardiac electrical activity, pupillary response, any movement, a carotid pulse that's palpable, a measurable blood pressure, or spontaneous respiration. So um, those are factors to consider. Sometimes it's a little bit of a gray area. Um, whether we're going to do a thoracotomy, and if they're over 60, no signs of life, then those are, those are some of the other factors that might tip us towards not doing it. I will say in this case, the care was excellent. We know how it is with these traumas. There are a lot of people, everyone's trying to help at first. The CPR was continued in the ED for a brief period of time, and a milligram of epinephrine was given. I would just say those are probably not indicated in this case. Anything that delays our care from doing an immediate thoracotomy is not indicated, uh, unless you have a strong reason to suspect there's something medically wrong with the patient. They're like a dialysis patient who skipped dialysis for three weeks, or they had crushing chest pain just before their car accident. In those cases, you might proceed with some medical resuscitation. But in general, we should feel empowered, even if the trauma team is not here, to grab the tray and get started when the patients uh, meet criteria. That's it. Thanks. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.